difficult because there is a huge range of beliefs, and I have Jewish friends of mine who go on the Saturday marches. Really. It's, it's awful. Wow. And they're not There's friends. a case unfortunately, for I mean, yeah. unfortunately, they're probably not my friends anymore. Yeah. But but there are there is a minority of of people who Jewish people who go on the marches on a Saturday. Go, no, it's amazing. We're marching for for the poor people in in Gaza, and 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 you have that side of things. You you know, it sort of goes on to a question that I want to ask you, which lots of people have asked me <laughs> to ask you, hmm. um, which is this, which is. There is, you know, the Jewish community is a real mix of political beliefs, and there is a large group of of, of people who would who would call themselves far more to the left. They would be the Guardian readers. They would the you, you, that side of people, and they and they have said to me, "I love Douglas. I love what he says, but he's a bit right wing." And they say, "How do I balance?" The, the, my political <laughs> oh. beliefs with what he's saying and his his more right wing beliefs, and they're they're struggling with that. I tell you, I've got one response. And how about tell asking me. him to tell the truth? <laughs> how about how about urging them to orient their life not by a boring political seesaw game that no one cares about except for themselves? And instead of orienting themselves by, oh, exactly how can I position myself? No one yeah. cares. No one cares. How? It's why we saying, love Douglas. In, right? in, in, instead of saying, how will I balance myself to make sure I keep my Guardian Reader friends on side? Say, how about you just orient yourself towards the truth? Yeah. You know, if something exists in front of you, and when you when you come across a mental blockage like this. You, sh you, you, you can keep head hitting your head across against the wall, or you can realize that you've got to do something else. And the something else in this case is to look frankly at what is actually happening. Mm -hmm. Also, by the way, it's a serious moral defect in a person to believe that their, uh, their membership of a political tribe should override anything else. If, if I, I, don't care, I don't care whether I'm thought of as, as right-wing or not, but if somebody said to me, oh, Douglas, you know, mm, I don't agree with you on Ukraine, and, you know, you're likely to tarnish your right-wing credentials, I'd say, so what? So what? What's that got to do with it? I don't care. Kick me out of your boring club. <laughs> Why would I want to be a member of it anyway? Yeah. And, I, and so, so let me say, first of all, on the... I mean, first, I should address the question of the lunatics you mentioned, the sort of... Uh, the Jews for suicide groups. Yes. Who, uh, uh, they're, they're always like this. I mean, there's Naturi Carter, of course. Um, there is, this is a joke that may only work with this audience, but uh, there's also, of course, there was Queers for Palestine. I mean, which it's the best. I, um, I, I called recently, and again, this doesn't work with everyone, but get, not everyone gets a reference. I think you can. I call Queers for Palestine the gay Naturi Carter. Um, <laughs> they... <laughs> they uh, exactly, saying like, okay, yeah, there's some people who like to die and just struggle madly beforehand. I mean, it's just, okay. Um, the, but then inside from that, I would urge your friends who say this to listen to the testimonies of people from the kibbutz who I've spoken with who were far to the left of any of the people you're talking about, I can Absolutely guarantee. Absolutely right. Absolutely And, right. you know, I... If you go around the, 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 the sites, they've been cleaned up a lot now. They weren't when I was there, it was pretty fresh. Um, and if you go around, you can literally see Peace Now stickers on what remains of somebody's fridge. And you can see, I mean, and you speak to the people. I, I spoke to a, a man in, uh, a hospital in Tel Aviv the other month in October, November. Uh, very nice man, been in the kibbutz all his life. Total left, is peace now, actress, peace, actress, believed in peace with the Gaza, lived just by the Gaza in uh, near Oz. And um, he was in the safe room on the morning of the 7th with his wife and teenage son and daughter. 
and uh, they, locked, they shut themselves in the safe room. As you know, the safe rooms didn't lock because mm. nobody expected this to happen. They tried to hold the door closed, and they did for quite a long time. He did for quite a long time, and then the terrorists found the uh, air vent um, because they, they, by then they'd set light to his house, and they were trying to burn them out. And a lot of families had this, and you had to choose whether to burn to death with your family or flee and be shot. And they stayed, and the smoke was getting too much, and they opened the vent. And then the Hamas saw this, and they threw grenades in, and one of the grenades killed his wife. And uh, then they stuck a Kalashnikov through the shutter, and they shot his 14-year-old son through each side of the chest, and he bled out in front of his father and his sister. And uh, his father also lost both his legs. And uh, it was heartbreaking. He, he described that his son said to him as he was dying, uh, would you bury me with my surfboard? He said, we said, would you bury me with my surfboard? And when the, um, when the authorities came to ask if he wanted anything from the house that was burnt, he said, only one thing, if you can find my son's surfboard. And he buried him with it. Um, he said to me at the end of our time together, he said, you know, Douglas, I've been a leftist all my life. I want nothing but potato fields from here to the Mediterranean. I can't, we can't live with these people. Mm. Now, there are hundreds of stories like that. Everyone's heard of the 75-year-old woman who spent her life driving Palestinian children to hospital I mean, imagine what it's like for the people who, and I've spoken to a lot of them, were so dedicated to the idea of people in Gaza, Palestinians in Gaza, working with them in Israel, mm. getting a better life. Just around the time of the 7th, there was meant to be another increase in the number of workers allowed each day from Gaza into Israel to work. And that was, all the international community were pushing Israel to allow more and more workers in. And I've spoken to a lot of people in the kibbutzes who, were friends with these people, were friends with Palestinians, employed Palestinians, worked with Palestinians, tried to, tried to do everything they could to make this work. And they discovered that when people came into their communities, they knew exactly where to go. Exactly. They knew, for instance, in one of the kibbutz, they knew where the house of the head of security in the kibbutz was, and they went and they shot him and his family, and then they would, went door to door everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, so I'd say to your friends, you know, Sleep and dream while you can, because not everyone has that luxury. The people of Near Oz didn't have that luxury. Yeah. The people of Berry didn't have that luxury. The people of kibbutz after kibbutz and town after town. The, everybody who went to the Nova party wanted peace. There were young people who wanted to dance and have a good time. And if you'd have said to them, do you dream of a day that you can dance with your Palestinian neighbors, they would have all said yes. Absolutely. But you know, your, th and these people could have been your friends and mine, and if this party had been going on in this country, our friends would have been there. So I would say to your friends, I beg you, have some empathy and understanding for the people who can no longer afford to dream dreams that you dream. That's really beautiful. I really don't have <laughs> any reply to that, Douglas. It's really, it's really powerful.